when I look at the beauty landscape today, I'm looking at it from the last two decades. So I have seen so many ingredients come and go, so many myths coming and being busted. And one of the biggest things that I come face to face a lot of times when talking about skin and hair with my customers and also with people is, but Hiram says. <laughs> I completely am in love with this guy called Hiram. Uh, if you don't know about him, you could check it out in one of his videos listed over here. He is this young sensation, is known to break and make brands. That's the kind of power he wields with his absolutely stunning communication skills. I mean, Hiram could sell you poison if you wanted to sell you that poison. And Hiram could also change your skin with the kind of knowledge he has. And not only that, in the way he's able to educate you from his extremely entertaining videos. With that said, there's been a few situations where Hiram has said something which has not been translated in my understanding to what it really should be. But Hiram says, which hazel is bad for your skin? Well, Hiram went after the brand called Thayer's. I wouldn't say went after, but kind of ridiculed the brand for it being a witch hazel brand. Keep in mind that Thayer's witch hazel has been in use since 1847. They've got to be doing something right because it for has a cult following among its users. Well, here is why witch hazel does work for some kind of skin types. The first reason that witch hazel works really well is because it really helps in degreasing your skin. Now, when you have very oily skin, you wake up in the morning, you can literally see your skin coated in a film of oil. In such situations, witch hazel really helps in degreasing it so, so that you can go in better with your cleansers. Witch hazel also gives you a very poreless finish to your skin because it's got tannins which compresses the protein in a skin barrier and that kind of reduces the appearance of your pores giving you an almost poreless look. Witch hazel also works very well in reducing inflammation so it's highly recommended when you have a lot of acne. And since it also helps in reducing the sebum production, it also helps in acne control because the less the sebum you have, the less your pores clog and therefore there's less infection. There are, however, certain skin types for which witch hazel may not work very well. These skin types which are very dry, which are easily irritated or are very sensitive or are very dehydrated, witch hazel can actually be a little more irritating and get your skin inflamed. So clearly stay aware from witch hazel. However, if you're going to be using witch hazel as part of a formulation where it's properly buffered with other emollients and good actives, it's not going to cause you any issues. But if you use witch hazel as a toner or an essence for such skin types, you can definitely expect to see some kind of inflammation, redness, or even sensitizing. So the good way to decide whether witch hazel is good for your skin or not is to kind of understand what your skin type is and what are your skincare needs. If your skincare needs are to have help for over oiliness or to decrease your skin or you have a lot of inflammation or bumps on your skin, definitely give witch hazel a try. But if you have very dry, very sensitive skin or skin that has a barrier issue, then definitely stay away from witch hazel. Like it's always shared in skincare community that it's never the ingredient that is bad. The dose is the poison. So it depends on how the ingredient is used in the formulation, what the buffering agents are, what the other ingredients in the formulation are. That is the real test of whether this particular product is going to work for you or not. But to give a blanket rule of this particular ingredient is bad for you is not really the right way to go ahead in the skincare landscape. Like parabens, Clean Beauty completely came and decimated parabens. Despite the fact, remember, that parabens have such a rich data set of uh, trials as well as experiences going back to decades. And parabens are the first choice for dermatologists, especially when they're uh, recommending products for people who have acne or psoriasis because their skin barriers are so compromised. Parabens are such gentle preservatives that they would rather give them products with paraben as a preservative than any other preservative. But came in clean beauty and they completely destroyed parabens. Here's a good thing, parabens are now again coming back in your skincare because dermatologists are going against clean, clean beauty in such a big dramatic fashion, going out and even calling clean beauty as unscientific and based on myths. So take everything that you hear on YouTube or in the beauty landscape with a pinch of salt, even if Hiram says it. With all my love to Hiram and to all of you, do be good to your skin and hair and employ the middle path is always best. Till I catch you next time, be good to your skin and hair.